In order to find the magnitude of the electric field at the given point, what we actually need to do is find the individual components of the electric field, the x, y, and z components, and then once we have the three components of the electric field, we can find its overall magnitude. Now we can see that in order to find the x component of the electric field, we must compute the negative partial derivative of the potential with respect to x. So this involves a partial derivatives, which is something we're going to want to talk about. Let's rewrite the given equation for the electric potential. The question notes that v is equal to 2xyz squared. And again, to find the electric field x component, we need the partial derivative of the potential with respect to x. Now, since we're doing this with respect to x, that means that our other symbols, y and z squared, are considered to be constants. So what you might find it helpful to do is to rearrange the expression so that your constants come first. So you'll have 2yz squared and then your variable x. Remember, y and z are constants, so this entire term highlighted in yellow is considered to be a constant. So when you compute the partial derivative of the electric potential with respect to x, you are treating all of that material in yellow as a constant. Now, for example, when you learned about derivatives and you calculated the derivative of, say, 10x, you knew that the derivative was just 10. So similarly, in this case, the derivative of this constant in front of x will just be that constant. So it will be 2yz squared. Now, the electric field in the x direction is equal to the negative of the partial derivative. So we'll actually have negative 2yz squared. To continue computing the electric field's x component, we would plug in the coordinates of the point. So this coordinate right here is the x coordinate, this negative 2 is the y coordinate, and the positive 4 is the z coordinate. So we're going to need to plug in the y and z coordinate, negative 2 and 4, into our equation here. So we'll have negative 2 multiplied by negative 2 multiplied by 4 squared. So now we have positive 4 multiplied by positive 16, so we're going to end up with 64 newtons per coulomb. So let's hang on to this value. We're going to need it along with the other components. We'll head back up and we'll do a similar procedure to calculate the electric field's y component. So the y component is going to be the negative of the partial derivative of the potential with respect to y. Once again, we'll write the electric potential equation here. And this time, we're calculating the partial derivative <coughs> excuse me, with respect to y. So that means the 2x and the z squared are the constants. So you can rewrite them in front as 2xz squared and then multiplied by y. Once again, all of this is a constant. So when you compute the partial derivative of the potential with respect to y, you end up with just that constant, 2xz squared. And then again, the electric, excuse me, the electric field uh, y component is equal to negative of that partial derivative. So now all we have to do is again plug in the given x and z coordinates. x was 3, z was 4. So you end up with negative 6 multiplied by 16. So this should come out to negative 96 newtons per coulomb. So this would be the y component of the electric field. Let's finish this off and get the z component. We know the potential is 2xyz squared. Since we're doing this with respect to z, all of this is a constant. Now be careful here because the z is now z squared. So when you do the partial derivative of the potential with respect to z, you have to use the power rule. So that 2 right there needs to be multiplied by your constant. So you're going to have the 2 multiplied by 2xy, which becomes, of course, 4xy. And then z is now raised to the power of 1. And that's just following the power rule for derivatives. The electric field component in the z direction is equal to the negative of that partial derivative. 
And so now we just plug in the x, y, and z coordinates. x was 3, y was negative 2, and z was 4. So now we have negative 4 times 3 times negative 2 times 4 gives us positive 96 newtons per coulomb. So here are the three electric field components x y and z but we want the overall magnitude then that's not too bad because the overall electric field is simply the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared plus the z component squared it's basically like a 3d pythagorean theorem in order to get the electric field magnitude so we'll put in our values here we'll omit units for clarity right now but it's 64 squared plus negative 96 squared plus positive 96 squared and then taking the square root of all that so if you punch this into your calculator you will get an overall electric field magnitude of about 150 and this will be measured in newtons per coulomb or an equivalent unit is volts per meter just so you know so this is the correct answer to the question